take the epidemic model in this video, there are four main steps. Remember, there are many ways to code these ideas. We only introduce one of them. There are at least two ways to add a carrier into the simulation. We can create a new carrier agent, or we can ask one of these susceptible people to become a carrier. We will do the second way. Let's create a procedure called add a carrier, which asks one of the turtles to become orange. Here, we use orange as the carrier color. Then we add this procedure into the setup button. I will speed up the actual programming procedure. Remember, you can always pause. We have had the moving rules in the simulation. Now let's program the transmission rules. In the simulation, the carrier moves around. When it gets closer to susceptible people, one of the susceptible people might be affected. Let's code this procedure. We create the transmission procedure we want to add this transmission procedure title into the Go procedure. In the transmission, we ask carriers who are orange. We ask them to look around, see if there are any susceptible people nearby, yeah, in radius of 1.5. If there is one, i.e. not equal nobody, ask the susceptible people at a certain chance become a carrier, change the color. Several pairs of brackets are used in this procedure. Make sure you have all the closing brackets. Then we go to the interface tab to create the transmission rate slider. Netlogo simulations often run fast. Let's create a button to run tick by tick. Simply make a go button, uncheck the forever, then put a different display name. There you go. The disease is spreading in the simulation. Let's create monitors and plots to track the changes in the simulation. Create a monitor, put in count turtles with color equal 68. This is susceptible people color. So we put display name susceptible. The monitor immediately tells us how many susceptible people we have at this time. In the same way, we can create a monitor for carriers. Remember to put a display name to help us recognize these monitors. 
At this point, the susceptible people and the carriers should add up to the population size. Now, follow the tutorial to make a plot. If you do not see anything plotted, that's because you need to put a command in the Go procedure. Put down tick at the end of the Go procedure. It will update your plot every tick. There you go. You can also plot carrier in the same graph. Now let's code how carriers become sick. The big idea is the carriers go through an incubation period and then become sick. We can make a variable to record how long a carrier has been affected. Every tick, this variable increase one day. If the variable reaches to the incubation period, the carrier becomes sick. If not, it keeps accumulating. So we go to the top of the simulation code. In the turtle's own, we create a turtle variable called days after exposure. It will be zero for all turtles at the very beginning. Then we create the incubation procedure. We want to put the title into the Go procedure, of course. In the incubation procedure, we ask all carriers, the orange turtles, right? We tell them, if your days after exposure are shorter than the incubation period, only add one more day. Otherwise, Set your color as red, indicating sickness. Also, change the shape from person to house. Then create an incubation period slider in the interface tab. Put 2 and 14 as the minimum and maximum days. Put default value as 6. So these are the data from COVID-19. Now you can see the red little houses that represent the sick people stay at home or hospital. But they're moving because the move procedure asks all turtles to move around. Let's update it. We will ask the turtles with the shape of person to move around so that the houses stay still. I think we did it. 
Now we want to code what happened to the sick people or infectious people. The big idea is they go through this disease period. After the disease period, at a certain mortality rate, they either recover or die. Same as coding incubation, we want to create a turtle's own variable called days of sick. We can use it to record how long a person has been sick. Create a sickness procedure and put the title into the goal procedure. In sickness procedure, we ask all sick people, the red turtles. If you have not been sick for 14 days, add one day to your record. We will come back to you next tick. If you have been sick for 14 days, at a certain mortality rate, you either die or recover. We set recovered people color as blue, and also we set their shape back to person. Make sure you have all the closing brackets. Then we go to create the mortality slider. Because it's a rate, we set minimum and maximum as 0 and 100. Great! We defined all the main rules. Now, let's update the monitors and the plots. To get the desktop, we need a little map. We cannot count the deceased people because they disappeared from the simulation. But we can use the population size minus the recovered people to calculate the total death. Let's also update the plot. Technically, we're done, but let's add two finishing touches. The simulation will keep running. It would be great if it stopped when the epidemic ends. We can use code to make that happen. Let's add a command at the beginning of the Go procedure. We say, if ticks are larger than incubation period and count turtles with color equal red equal zero. Stop. This command will let the simulation go and then stop when there are no infectious people. I think we did it. The max daily cases is an indicator for the severity of an epidemic. 
In this plot, we can find the max daily cases in the line, but we can also create a monitor to report that immediately. We will create a max daily cases variable. This is a globals variable. Then we make a procedure to find this max daily cases. We put the title in the go procedure and we create the procedure. The max daily cases number is zero at the very beginning. Then it will be updated based on the number of cases in each tick. Say we have no infectious people in the first six days, then the max daily cases remain as zero. On day seven, we have one infectious person, then we update max daily cases to one. On day eight, we have more cases, then we will update the max daily cases again. But at a certain point, we will have fewer cases, then the max daily cases will not be updated. That's what the two lines of code mean in this procedure. Then we go to the interface tab, create a monitor to display the max daily cases. Congratulations, you have built an epidemic simulation. If you noticed, I made some mistake when coding the max daily cases. You are right. We might have typo, miss some brackets, or have extra spaces, or not have spaces. We can use the check function to find them. In next tutorial, we will add human mobility and vaccination into the simulation. See you there.